guys, it's Allison here, and since I have embarked on organizing all my layouts, um, I'm sort of in this mode, I guess, or feeling of wanting to finish certain projects. One of the projects that is mostly finished, sort of, <laughs> maybe three quarters of the way finished, is my, um, my upgrade albums of the Harry Potter studio tour that my daughters and I did last summer. So I just I wanted to do a quick flip through of what I have so far and then show you um, what I still have to do and how I am going to be tackling it. Okay, so I have two albums like this and uh, I'm just going to flip them and then um, I will voice over because my kids are home so I can't trust that they won't run in to this room here. <laughs> okay. So these albums are in chronological order. And you can see all of these layouts um, on my, uh, I think they're all on my Flickr gallery. Uh, I'll try and link to them out. Anyways, so um, we're starting um, with sort of us arriving at the studio and then the cupboard under the stairs, the front gates, and this is the great hall. And then um, the Yule Ball displays and um, items from the Gryffindor Tower. So the Fat Lady, and then this is the common room and the uh, bedrooms and then some costuming uh, I apologize for the glare and then we move on to Dumbledore's office so the album sort of follows the the route that we took through the studio um, with a few little sidetracks so I talk about the wands and I've got two photos there from two different locations um, and then the the Quidditch we've got Hagrid's hut umbridge lots and lots of pink Aragog, got some yucky spider webs. Um, there is a gap there that needs to be filled. So some props. And that is the end of book one. There are gaps there, and I know that, um, but I have a plan to how to fill the gaps. So then we move on to book two. And this is, the first few layouts are about um, platform nine and three quarters and the Hogwarts Express, that kind of thing. So I've included the passports that they got stamped, um, a ticket that I bought, an Euro ticket for the train. Um, yeah, so lots of layouts, them trying to push through platform nine and three quarters and the wall. Uh, so then we move on to Diagon Alley and we've got the Leaky Cauldron and Gringotts and then uh, a double page spread showing like a lot of the different shops on the alley and then Weasley's um, shop, and then the back lot, we've got the night bus, we've got Privet Drive, we've got the Potter House, um, there's still other things from the back lot, I have to scrapbook, and we've got some scale models, and we've got the giant diorama of Hogwarts Castle, which is sort of the last hurrah, so to speak. And then um, the last couple layouts, one is about how my daughters bought wands as their keepsake, and then about our our butterbeer adventure. Um, so those are the two albums as I have them so far. Okay, so that was a quick look at all the layouts that um, I have done so far. And like I've said, um, I've, I've got lots of videos uh, here on YouTube. I'm making all of those. Um, so I will put the link to the playlist below. Okay, so moving forward, I have got this envelope of photos left and um, I went through when I was flipping through the album and then also when I flipped through the photos I sort of wrote, wrote down areas that I was missing so I've still got photos from the back lot of costumes and props um, there are photos taken on the Hogwarts Express like of the various um, cars and the sort of what's the word I'm looking for the little rooms that they had um, and also I have quite a few of the candy cart, the witch, you know, the, anyways. So, yeah, and because that section, we go from photos of the train to photos um, at the very last sort of vignette at the end of the train. So we're missing a chunk there. Okay, I got photos of Buckbeak in the Dark Forest. I've got the, that double spread of Aragog, but there's also um, Buckbeak and then the making of a Patronus that also is in there. 
Um, lots of photos from the Ministry of Magic and also the scene in book seven uh, with the giant where the giant snake eats the muggle or the the mudblood or whatever you want to call her um, witch and I can't remember the witch's name at the moment. There's some pictures of all the Quidditch stuff. I've got the one photo of the girls with the broomstick um, and then the one of us um, which was in the same area the the sort of the want ad have you seen these witches um, but there was a lot of Quidditch paraphernalia that I don't haven't documented yet the burrow I've got pictures of the Weasley's home that I haven't documented and then potions class so there's quite a lot there and I, I still have space there was empty page protectors in that album so um, yeah so this is how I've been organizing it these I have various dividers inside here I'll show you quickly uh, just things like this that I quickly sc um, scroll down about what the photos are props um, this is from book six slughorn as a chair that sort of thing so um, I can easily grab a stack and create a layout but this gives me a visual sort of reference of the the gaps that I can see right now and once I have filled the gaps I'll just pull that off and then this envelope is for all the extra photos. So I printed off a lot of photos and I can't possibly use them all in the scrapbook. Um, so I put the leftovers in there and I don't know what I'm gonna do with them, but I figure they're good to have on hand because you never know there might be some reason to either scrapbook them or give them to my kids or use them for something else. So that's what I do with once I have gone through a section so all these ones from on the Hogwarts Express oops there's potions class in there too hang on a minute let me get to the right the right amount of photos so once I've gone through all of these and used which ones I want on the layout to tell the story of the train the rest of them will go in this Does that make sense okay so let's make a layout shall we the other thing that I have that if you were watching all my other layouts, because I did most of those two albums I put together through February's um, Layout a Day challenge. And while I was doing that, I amassed a pile of scraps. I'll show you what I mean. This is my little scrap bin. I think this used to hold like a giant Lego blocks or something. Um, this is this contains all the papers that I've used in that album and then I'm starting to add papers that I've used in my um, other travel album because it's the same trip I'm creating upgrade albums about our trip to Britain and France um, and then I pulled out this one day and created these two albums from it. I know it's completely ridiculous, but this was a this was a huge thing for us to go to the Harry Potter studios. It was sort of a, a dream come true. So, anyways, I have this that I can pull from so that my pages stay coherent, um, cohesive, even rather. Um, and this is this will give me um, help me get a feel for what these layouts look like because it's been quite a while since I made one. So I'm just going to rearrange the camera so we had a bit of a tighter shot. I just realized we're still quite zoomed out. So um, yeah, and then I will pick my photos. I think I am going to participate in one of the paper issues challenges as well. So I'll have to figure out which one that's going to be and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I've chosen these photos of the, uh, the trolley on the, tra on the Hogwarts Express and I've got three. I'll, I'll probably only use two. And I'll just sort of decide which ones are best later. And I am going to do the Keep It Sketchy challenge. So this is the sketch and I'll insert it here. But as you can see, uh, you've got a, a border and then there's like clusters behind the photo and then a, um, a ray pattern. So I don't have any paper and I, I don't really want to take the time to cut those rays. So what I'm going to use is some washi tape. 
So I've pulled out lots of washi tape and I figure I can create that sort of ray pattern. As for papers, I was digging through my papers and I was thinking I needed something fun and um, I had gone to my box of crayons collection and there was, there was lots of color in there. Um, and then I remembered that I had this paper, I've had it forever. It's um, from Little Yellow Bicycle. I don't even know if they're still around anymore. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's a year on here, 2010. So that's eight years old. And it's got all these lollipops on it. So I thought that was kind of perfect. I'll probably just have it behind the photo somehow or maybe a strip or something. Um, and then my background is gonna be this one and I know it's it's got hearts on it, but um, what I just, I really wanted is just kind of a neutral background. I've pulled in um, a few other scraps, some purple and some yellow. And that is as far as I've gotten. So, um, oh, that's not as far as I've gotten. Sorry, I have pulled in all sorts of stickers and embellishments. These are mostly um, Chamel sticker books, chipboard. There's a few other things put in there and some Gossamer blue chipboard at the back. Um, and then I've got some glittery thickers for my title. And I know that in the box of crayons, um, sticker folders. There's I've got the one that has all the alphabets so I can mix and match the um, glittery thickers with some tile letters. Okay, I think that's enough to get going with. I am going to start. So I must apologize, but there was a bit of corrupted video. So basically the whole process of me putting down the washi um, is has lost, has been lost because it was all corrupted. So um, I do apologize for that. But there's nothing sort of new or earth shattering about it. Uh, it's basically, as you can see there in that shot, it is random strips of washi arranged roughly around a central point. And then I wrapped the washi around to the back to secure it. And I was not at all concerned about making it super messy in the middle there because I knew that's where my photos were gonna be. Um, so yeah, it's pretty easy. Just take washi and stick it to your paper. <laughs> there you go you didn't miss anything so now I'm working on the photos and the sort of layers behind it and I am using two photos I've chosen a the close-up of all the candy and then the the one sort of um, wide shot of the trolley that uh, shows I guess shows a lot of the detail of the trolley and, and the location of, of where it was on the train and then um, I trimmed it a tiny bit. I think I took about mm, maybe an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch off the top of the photos just so they would fit on that yellow paper to mat it with. And then as you can see, I've just created a couple of blocks, matte blocks behind. I had cut down the lollipop paper into a four inch strip and then uh, trimmed it to eight inches. And when I layered it behind the two photos on the yellow mat, it wasn't quite wide enough. So I chopped it in half and cheated, basically. Pulled it out a little bit on either side. Um, and as you saw, I just used the extra piece of the paper to um, line, line it up to make sure that it uh, really does look like it is all one piece of paper. And then the purple was exactly the right size, so I didn't have to trim that really at all. And then... Um, I just stuck it down and now I'm getting my um, title in place and I want to have sort of the word at the front and the word at the back if that makes any sense um, in the glittery thickers and then the two in the middle in the tiled stickers and I'd gone through all of the sets of, of letter tiled stickers from the uh, box of crayons collection that I have and then I ended up using the ones from the glitter girl collection so there you go. They just fit better with the color scheme that I had, uh, so I did that, used those. And now I am going through all of those sticker sheets and pulling out anything that I feel uh, will work with the theme, with the feeling that I'm trying to convey, with the colors. Um, so yeah, so box of, okay, first of all, from Glitter Girl, I've got that unicorn. Uh, I believe it says, may all your dreams come true or something like that. And then the yellow um, journaling tag. 
And then I went to my box of crayons and there was the um, three cream squares. So one of them has a cake or something like this with lots of candies and things on it. Uh, it says treat yourself. I thought that was fairly appropriate. And the other one, there's a rainbow that says anything, is a rainbow of possibilities or something like that. Anyways, um, they all really worked. They all, like the, the um, sentiments on them fit the theme of the layout. And I liked that there was three squares. And I was a little worried about the cream because there is white behind the lollipop, in the background of the lollipop paper. But um, the background of my, like my background background is cream. So I've got cream and white going already. So I wasn't that worried about adding more cream. In the sketch, there is um, something that looks a little bit like a doily. So I grabbed a doily chopped in half so that I could put one half on the top uh, right. And then I had to take off my letter stickers that say anything to put the other half of the doily underneath them. Contemplated moving the doily somewhere else, but I really wanted them down there. Um, so, you know, had to do it. And now it's just a matter of finding homes for everything else. From the, mm, it is a, it's an old Chamel collection, uh, what is it, True Stories, I think? I've got a couple of stickers. So I've got the one at the top there that is the banner, uh, it says, eat well and travel often. And then, um, sorry, it's got a little bit of glare on it right now, but you'll see them in the close-ups. Just to the left of the photos, there's a stack of suitcases from that same sticker book. And then I've also got some phrase stickers and some lollipops from the um, box of crayons collection. So it's just a matter of finding homes, trying to move the colors around, make sure sort of each little area has the turquoise, pink, maybe a bit of yellow, um, I think I've only got that one spot of wood grain where the unicorn is, but I think it's okay. I did pop up that unicorn with some foam squares. And then after I got my journaling in, um, it's time to add something with a different texture. So I've got the enamel shapes from box of crayons and I added a couple of stars in each cluster. Um, I think one turquoise, one yellow, I believe. But there wasn't pink on the sheet. It was more of a red and then there was an orange. So I really wanted pink. So I went into my stash and I got some pink jewels. And just thinking that this is it. And it is, I'm finished with the layout, but I am worried that the washi is going to come up from the back. Um, I've had this happen before, so I decide to reinforce the back with a piece of um, sort of throwaway cardstock. And I don't know if it wasn't quite 12 by 12 or what the deal was, but I ended up having to trim a little bit off it. But anyways, that just makes sure that when the layout is in my album, that the, those washi um, strips don't curl up from the back. And there you go, there's my finished layout. I think it's lots of fun, lots of color, and I was really happy to get so many stickers on this layout. I've been having some issues with uh, wanting my layouts to be a little less sort of in your face pattern wise. I'm not sure I succeeded with this one, but uh, I think I'm working towards it. I don't think there's quite as much of the um, canvas taken up with pattern and color. I think you get to see a lot more of the background and allow yourself to breathe, if that makes sense. Okay, thanks guys. Thanks for joining me and I will see you again soon.